Okay, a very warm welcome. Today we will be talking about trade and practicalities around trade and today's focus is on taking goods temporarily out of the UK. The most pragmatic and popular way for traders to do so is the ATA Carnet process. And if you don't know what it stands for, it, it, it actually stands for temporary admission, temporary, um, uh, temporary admission. The ATA Carnet process allows traders to export goods without paying taxes and duties. And the process simplifies clearing goods through customs when leaving the UK and entering another country. Uh, the ATA Carnet process is commonly used for temporarily exporting, for example, commercial samples, taking goods to exhibitions and for taking professional equipment to do export activity abroad. So important to note is if you don't return the goods um, to the UK, you will have to pay duty and taxes. Today we will look at the ATA Carnet system, how it works worldwide, with a clear focus on Carnets issued in the UK. We will look at border processes and getting an understanding of how traders can prepare to avoid potential holdups. But before we do all that, allow me to introduce myself and my expert panel. My name is Maria Dutsch. I work for the Department for um, Business and Trade, and I sit in the Borders Trade and Facilitation Team within our Export Support Services. Let me introduce you to our panelists. Uh, Martin Senior. Martin has a wealth of experience in international trade. He worked for many years as export manager in different industry sectors. He is one of our uh, most experienced international trade advisors, advising UK-based companies in all aspects of exporting. And last but not least, let me introduce you to Davor McKinley. Davor is an export documentation and trade facilitation specialist. He works for the London Chamber of Commerce and he is board director for UK Nataco. Through his work with UK Nataco, he links into the World ATA Carnet Council and he heads up the UK Digital Carnet Project. So, Quick recap before we start the conversation. ATA Carnets are international customs documents that permit duty-free and tax-free temporary exports from the UK and also allows duty and tax-free imports into another customs territory. ATAs are prepared, unified and simplified customs declarations forms that can be used at each customs border. ATA Carnets serve as a guarantee if the goods do not return to the UK. In that case, duties and taxes will have to be uh, paid. So UK Nataco is ultimately responsible for all ATA Carnets issued in the UK and is a national guaranteeing body for goods entering the UK on an ATA Carnet issued elsewhere in the world. Can I ask Martin first before bringing in Davor? Martin, can you start with explaining the, assist the assistance you offer as an international trade advisor? And do you think ATA Carnets have become more important over the years? Over to you, Martin. Oh, thank you. Um, as, as, a, uh, um, as an advisor, we basically help with any um, anything that the exporter or new to export company is looking to to do so there's a we have a wealth of knowledge within the uh, organization uh, dbt organization to to help with um getting goods overseas whether that be from uh the point of view of physically moving stuff around we can advise on to, to actually finding the customers in the first place um but on today's particular topic in, in terms of the ATA Carnets, I think that they have become um, more, uh, they've come to the fore more recently in that um, since uh, the UK left the single market, um, goods now require export documentation to take them into Europe. So to leave here and to go into, into Europe. So if you were looking to do um, an exhibition, for example, um, in Germany, um, then you will need 
some form of documentation to get the goods out of the UK and into um, into into France and on into Germany. Um, and you'll need again, you will need the documents to bring them back again. Um, uh, and in, not only to to move them across the borders, but also to ensure that uh, you don't uh, you don't have to pay duties either way for 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 doing that. Um, I think uh, it was uh, you mentioned that um, you know it's, it's not just exhibitions; it's musicians, it's photographers, it's videographers, it's it's professional people that are moving and carrying expensive equipment around with them need documentation these days to get them in and out of Europe and the ACA Carnet is 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 the way that uh, we would go. Okay, thank you, Martin. So are you, are you saying uh, the ACA Carnet process has always been in place, but because of um, uh, the end of the transition period, they became more prominent, especially when dealing with Europe? Absolutely, yes. I mean, ATA Carnets have been around for years and years. I'm not quite sure how many years, but certainly a, a lot of years um, and have been for is it something like 70 countries in the world are, uh, uh, use them. So it's been um, they have been around and the, the actual mm -hmm. process has been known for a long time. It's just that it hasn't been when, when we were part of the single market, it wasn't required because goods in free circulation, etc. You could just take them backwards and forwards to to exhibitions with without any problems at all. Um, myself, yeah. as in my days as a, um, a an export manager, have loaded up a, a transit van and driven it across to uh, to Germany and emptied it out onto an exhibition stand and, and then put it all back in again and drove it back again without any issues. Now you have to have that documented or otherwise um, you, you come across uh, things like having to pay VAT and duties on on products on not only yeah. into into Europe, but then when you come back into the UK, you'll have to do the same again. So, you know, it could be a quite an expensive uh, mistake to make if you try to do it without documentation. Thank you, Martin. Thanks for, for clarifying that. Can I bring in Davor? Davor, what exactly is the advantage of using an ATA carnet and how do you get one? Thank you, Maria. Um, yes, ATA Carne offers offers multiple benefits or advantages to the Carne user. So each Carne is valid for 12 months and can be used in over 80 destinations around the world. Um, ATA Carne simplifies the temporary admission procedure as it is used exactly in the same way in every single country the, the Carne holder goes to. In comparison, um, if the holders were using temporary admission under national laws, um, they would have to register with the local customs, they would have to lodge uh, deposits or bank guarantees, so the process can be quite cumbersome. ATA Carne acts as an alternative to those national procedures and therefore makes everything easier and quicker for the Carne user. Um, with an ATA Carne, all the arrangements um, are, are done in advance at a predetermined fee. Therefore, the Carne user can budget properly and more accurately and they can keep their costs down. Um, and also, Carnes will go digital soon which will make them even easier to use in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Davo. Um, how long is a carnet valid uh, for? Or do I have to apply yeah. several times for it? Yeah, so it's valid for, for one year and it can include multiple destinations. So effectively, um, when the carne holder applies for a carne, they can either specify individual countries so for or customs unions, of course. So for example, they can just say, oh, I'm going to European Union, or they could say I'm going to EU, USA, Switzerland and any other countries. So, um, so yeah, so this is all part of the application process. But the main point is they can visit all those countries in a one year period and that's one of the biggest advantages of that one single document. Fantastic, thank you. And how do you get an ATA carnet? Is there a process to it? Or what do yes. traders have to prepare themselves for? Yes, so uh, Tom, could you please bring the slide four up for us? Um, great, thank you. Um, so effectively, there are three steps to obtaining an ATA carne. So first of all, the the carne holder or the trader has to um, contact their 
issuing chamber. The list of all the issuing chambers is on the UK NATACO webpage. It's literally on a homepage and there are 18 different chambers currently in the UK issuing carnets. So what the holder or the trader will have to do, they will provide details um, of who the carnet holder is, i.e. who's, who's legally responsible for these goods, um, who will be using the carne, and finally, what the intended use of the goods is. So as Martin mentioned earlier, um, you know, uh, someone going to Germany for an exhibition, for example, would have to then specify the intended uses exhibition. Um, second step is to create a general list. That's literally the list of all the items that will be temporarily exported abroad. Um, and finally, of course, um, as with any as with any other document, um, the final stage is to make payment. So that's to to pay for the security, which is worked out um, based on what countries are being visited, uh, and of course, pay the issuing fee. And this is what I meant by um, the carne holder or the or the trader works with set costs. So once you've paid for that carne, it's valid for one year, and it can be do, it, can, it can be used in all these um, 80 countries without any additional fees. Now, some of the other things um, that carne applicants have to consider in order to make the process as efficient and as quick as possible is um, how do they build the general list? As I said, every single item has to be itemized individually to allow customs uh, to properly monitor the goods going in and then the goods coming out of the territory. So of course, every item has to have a serial number, value and a meaningful description. Of course, the holder will also have to plan ahead. So they will need to know what countries they're visiting because carne consists of certain number of vouchers and those vouchers are called transaction vouchers and they are handed over uh, to the customs on entry and exit out of each country. Um, again, as Martin said earlier, um, again, um, there are certain permits or um, licenses required for certain types of goods. So again, kind of, kind of holder has to know what type of goods they are dealing with. So if they are dealing with controlled goods, they may also need to have an export license in place. If they are exporting any goods that incorporate um, materials of protected species or plants, or sorry, animals or plants. Again, they have to have a CITES certificate. So there are all different things that have to be sort of considered before a can, can be applied for in order to uh, speed up the application process and also to make sure that there are no problems when clearing the customs themselves. And again, finally, as Maria mentioned earlier, um, if the carne is misused, i.e. the goods uh, remain in the country of temporary admission, then of course uh, the holder would, would be obliged to pay, pay duty in that country. So, so again, so so all the holders have to be aware of what the application process involves, and also what are the other things that could be um, part of that particular equation. Fantastic, thank you. That was very clear. Um, you mentioned uh, that there are specific licenses for specific items to be obtained as well um, for the application process. Um, are ITA cards for all kind of products or are there any exemptions of products where it's where you can't issue an ITA card? Yes. That's a very good question, Maria. Um, so ATA carne can only be used for goods that will be returned to the UK in exactly the same state as they when they were exported. So any items for processing or repair um, cannot be cannot be taken out on a carne. You would have to use um, OPR and IPR procedure for those things. Um, of course, you would not use a carne for personal goods either. So for example, if you were if you were traveling to France and you had your camera with you, your camcorder with you, and you're going on holiday, and of course you just want to record what you've been doing, then you would not need a carne for that either. Um, there are also certain exemptions um, in place for musicians. So any hand-carried music equipment um, is exempt from ATA carnets. So, um, and of course, certain other goods that cannot be taken on a carnet is uh, goods subject to excise, so of course, fuels, um, alcohol, um, any kind of um, perishable or um, consumables. So those are the type, type of the items that we would not include on a carnet normally. 
Thank you. Thanks for, for this clarification. Very important. Um, can I go back to, to, to Martin, please? So Martin, where, where do you, um, how do you support businesses and where do businesses go for export help in general and where do they go for ATA Carnet help? Can you, can you explain a little bit, please? Yeah, I mean, in terms of um, the, uh, the help that's on offer, obviously that's uh, DBT. We have uh, trade advisors like myself throughout the country. Um, so um, the, they t we tend to deal with the slightly larger companies and those that with more experience already at uh, exporting. Um, and then there's the Export Support Service that uh, helps the, the, uh, the smaller companies um, and the um, Export Academy, which is there to certainly assist the very new companies um, by giving them lots and lots of really good, solid information about how they get started, what they need to be doing, um, how they plan for, um, for their export journey. Um, as, a, as an ITA, I would tend to be getting involved in that, um, developing the plan, the export plan with a company. So, you know, where they need to be looking, how they need to move forward. So things like exhibitions certainly come into that and we'd be looking to help them plan the, the exhibition. And there, there's a number of things that you would need to consider there, um, apart from whether it's the right exhibition for you. And for your particular product, obviously, is the first stage. And once you've found that exhibition, um, it's it's looking at how you encourage people to come onto onto your stand. Um, but also part of that is is then actually how you're going to get your stand there. Um, you could be shipping everything out through the the carrier that's been nominated by the exhibition or or your own um, out to the exhibition or um, as I mentioned, with the European ones, you could be loading it all into a van and uh, and driving it out there. Um, mm. Obviously, at, that's when you're when we've got to that stage, or as we're approaching that stage as part of their planning for the exhibition itself. Um, we would put them in touch with uh, with with Unatico to um, uh, to give them the advice on the actual documentation side. We can't, we don't do that. I mean, I I know what it's about and I know how it's used, but the actual um, detail of using it is, is something that I would certainly uh, hand them over to, to Davo about, to, to, to talk to them about. Um, I mean, the question I would have is, is it, is it possible now for a company to um, actually load a van up and drive it to to Germany, you know, obviously with the with a with um with a car make. Can they actually do that? Is there places they stop to to get their 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 passes and things? Uh, yes, of course. Um, so um, since um, before Brexit, basically the UK government um, realised that there will, there will be a lot of pressure um, at the borders at the UK borders, and therefore they've introduced what we call um, IBFs or interna internal border facilities. So those IBFs are in place to take the pressure away from the border and to make sure that all the documentation is processed much more quicker and expediently for everyone involved. So uh, in terms of someone driving the goods in a van, um, they would log on to the IBF app and they will pre-notify, let's say, Stop24, for example, that they are coming along to get their goods inspected. So as they arrive at Stop24, um, the border force will log into the IBF app. They will get all the details of their particular journey and they'll process the carne and of course, you know, the, the holder will then be able to either jump on Euro shuttle or they'll be able to to, to go onto the ferry um, to Dover. Of course, um, hauliers and freight forwarders have to use uh, larger facilities such as Sevington. Um, but again, all these things are in place to make sure that the uh, any carne and customs transactions are carried out as quickly as possible. Then, of course, on arrival at Dover, um, French customs have their own facilities. And of course, they will process you into European Union. And the beauty is that once you've been processed into France, the goods 
goods can travel anywhere else within the EU. Um, and of course, on the way back to the UK, you would have to find um, the customs at Calais. Calais customs will stamp re-exportation out of the EU. And of course, you would go back to one of the IBFs on, returned, on returning to the UK. So effectively, every step of the journey has to be endorsed by customs. That's very important, and thank you, thank you for for mentioning that because the processes at border are a key part of making the ATA process overall run very smoothly. Um, yes, so thank you for that. But also maybe to mention um, with the exhibition, it's not only taking maybe a stand or a sample over to a foreign country on an ATA card, it's also the preparation for going <laughs> to an exhibition. And well, this is actually where Martin comes yeah, in yeah. To, uh, with his day to day work. Would you like to would you like to explore a little bit more there, Martin? Yeah, as, 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 I, as I mentioned very briefly, I mean, we would we look at the um the the overall strategy of a company um what it is they're looking to achieve in terms of their international business um where it is they want to be going both uh, geographically and as far as as sectors are concerned and we look to see where the the assistance that we can offer with the likes of our overseas offices um to be able to 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 give advice and guidance on in market um, things um, potentially help to find um, distributors and agents in in overseas territories um, so we, we, ours is we're at the the sort of the um, the bigger end initially we do that sort of that helicopter type view of the company and and where they want to be and we um, we look to guide them in terms of um, where they can where, where they could best maybe achieve their their goals and how best to achieve those goals that they have. Um, I mentioned exhibitions purely as, as obviously one potential route for them to uh, to get into a new market. There are um, numerous other ways of doing it. Um, and, and that's where we would certainly look to try and assist them is, is to to find the best route into the market for them using the experiences that we've got as, as, as international trade advisors but also using the the experiences of all our colleagues overseas in terms of how best to uh, to enter a particular sector in a particular market because they can all be very different and um, I think most of the ITAs will be able to tell stories of how they've made a mess of it at times and how they've learned how it should be done as opposed to how they did it initially so it's sort of passing on that type of information is 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 where we're key um, and as far as the DBT is concerned in general, we can help right from, as, as I mentioned, right from the very beginning with the with, with the likes of the Export Academy, where they hold their um, lots and lots of very good seminars in terms of giving information about all the different parts of um, the overall export process. Fantastic. Oh, thank you for, for explaining that a little bit more in detail. Great. So, Davor, what do you think? Um, what does the future hold for ATA Carnets then? <laughs> thank you, Maria. So, ATA, and I'm very excited to, 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 to say this, um, Carnets will be going digital in the future. Um, so, there are currently um, global efforts to digitalize ATA Carnets, and that has been the case since um, 2007, when the World Customs Organization um, suggested that all the customs procedures should be digitalized, therefore, of course, Carnets too. Um, so European Union started um, digitalizing all of its procedures as part of the utility block, and of course, UK was still part of the uh, EU at that time, so we've continued digitalizing all of our procedures here as well. So. Um, so we are hoping that um, either towards the end of the next year or beginning of 2025, we will start switching to digital carnets. Um, we've successfully tested the um, digital 
infrastructure uh, at London Heathrow um, last year. So we had one carne um, going from Heathrow uh, to Brussels, um, and that was tested using a digital carne, and everything worked fine. Um, earlier on this year, all of the UK issuing bodies, so all the issuing chambers, have been trained on digital carnets. Um, as of in two weeks time, all the issuing, issuing chambers will be able to issue digital carnets as well. So on the issuing side, we are going to be ready from the beginning of next month. Um, and we are hoping to to start a digital carnet pilot um, from July onwards. Um, and then, of course, we would be piloting or testing those digital carnets at, until the end of the year. And then HMRC can make a decision in terms of when we go live with ATA carnets, what adjustments we need to make, and you know if there's anything else we need to consider before we can, we can go live. But it's all happening. Um, and again, other countries are also piloting digital carnets in their territory. So, um, so fingers crossed, we're going to have some uh, have some good news towards the end of the next year or, or beginning of 2025. Very interesting and very exciting um, to, to see that happening. It's the way to go, um, definitely digital. So very interesting conversation. Thank you, Davor, and thank you, Martin, and thank you to our audience for staying with us. I hope it provided you with some good insights. Um, so if you have any queries about exporting and ATA carnets, um, please contact us on, you see it on the screen, uh, the websites and the email addresses are there. The ESS Digital Inquiry Point here with the, with the government. Um, so we will answer any kind of export inquiries there. We can actually um, uh, signpost also to the international trade advisors who are dotted around uh, in the UK um, for your business. So we also um, signpost to our um, export academy. We hold export related masterclasses on this uh, academy. We have a big sele selection of subjects, uh, so please check, uh, check that out as well. And we also have our very extensive information on our gov.uk web pages, where you can browse for information in your own time as well. And of course, the ATA specific um, questions, you can always, of course, directly um, contact UK Nataco here, also the contact details on screen. So thank you very much again. I hope, uh, like me, uh, you enjoyed the conversation and uh, goodbye. Have a good day. Thank you.